in the stock market jungle. This animal has run wild with long-term gains. But when the going gets tough, does this zebra need to change its stripes? Or will advanced analytics and a new deal with the NFL keep the stock galloping onward? Even with the market roaring back today, some high-quality stocks are still down big from the recent highs. Hey, take Zebra Technologies, a technology company that's a leading player in enterprise asset intelligence. They specialize in mobile printers and computing, data capture, really important, radio frequency identification, and real-time locating systems that help other businesses keep track of their inventory, their vehicles, and their employees. I've liked this stock for ages, and long-term, it's been a huge winner. It's up 178% over the past five years, up more than 30% year-to-date, 3% bounce today. However, Zebra reported a truly fantastic quarter a couple weeks ago. It took even me by surprise when they sent the stock surging from 189 to 218 in a single day. And thanks to the recent turbulence, it's now back to 208. Is it viable? Let's check in with, with Anders Gustafsson. He's the CEO of Zebra Technologies. Find out more about the quarter and the company's prospect. Anders, welcome back to Man Money. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Congratulations on that great quarter. I know there were a lot of people betting against it because Honeywell had a disappointing quarter in your uh, a particular line of business. But you're really not that analog, right? You're very different companies. Yeah, we, we we overlap in a number of areas, but we do quite quite a few different things right. also. So you know, we have a we have a we have our own strengths and and uh, we compete for them, but not uh, not everywhere. Right. The reason I put it out is because when I go to Honeywell, I do not see a video of Sean Payton, the coach <laughs> of the New Orleans Saints and a man I greatly respect, talk about how at the end of a practice or a game, he uses all of your stuff to analyze who's really doing the job. That's right. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a unique industry that we're right. in. Yeah. And you have these cameras. Now I see around the stadium at the top, that's your material, right? Yeah, we do some of that also. Yeah. Because yeah. it seems like that uh, when I try to figure out human capital, yeah. uh, we don't know how to rate human capital, but we're paying these people. The teams are paying them millions of dollars. They can't afford to not have that sensor, and that's yeah. your product. Yeah, no, I think we, we've learned now this, this past year that uh, the, what the, the uh, tracking system we have with the NFL is actually considered to be the best by the broadcasters, the coaches, and the fans. Well, I wanted to ask you, yeah. um, because I'm a fantasy football player, can yeah. we get access to it? Uh, so I think that... It's not clear, right? Yeah, yeah the can NFL owns it? the data, so okay. we, we can't give you access to the data. I think they give access to some of the data, but okay. not all the data. Because that would be like yeah. the secret sauce. Yeah, then you have a, you know, all the information you could possibly uh, you know, want to have about every player. On the, on, well, it's as on, good as the, the combine, if not better. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, this was another quarter where you really distinguished yourself in the Omni Channel. You talked tremendously. It's almost, I cannot imagine a retailer who is trying to keep track of their 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 uh, any of their big warehouses yeah. not using you. How do you keep track of all that merchandise without Zebra? Yeah, I think we are now you know become an essential part of, right. of retailers' uh, uh, strategies for uh, building omni-channel and e-commerce uh, capabilities. You know, he historically we were probably viewed a bit more as a tactical device uh, right. supplier. Today we are much more of a of an integral part of enabling them to execute on their strategy, and we moved ourselves up the kind of the solution stack mm -hmm. to be able to de deliver more value to them. And you've got some new things, Savannah, Explore. These yeah. are all value part of your ecosystem? Yeah. Yeah, Savannah is, is, is our uh, data platform. Right. So basically what we can do is we can connect all sorts of um, uh, devices or, or, or sensors and on, on the kind of so the south side and the north side we can have uh, APIs to all sorts of other applications we can right. provide a lot of analytics around what's happening there all right so would you where would you fit in the uh, in, in say a uh, software as a service food chain an yeah. Adobe a Salesforce do they integrate with you or are you stand alone so we, we, we would um, uh, we, we so both I guess we okay. integrate with a lot of in independent software vendors. So if you all look right. at large uh, companies like Oracle, SAP, mm -hmm. Manhattan, JDA, they're all partners of ours. They tend to, you know, we, we exchange data with them. We provide data that they use for their uh, operations. But we also have our own uh, uh, software capabilities. We bought a company called Profitect right. that does you know predictive analytics. Uh, a good example of this. But we have other other software capabilities well, also. Because when I listened, I said I kind of felt like it was a recently uh, Salesforce bought a company called Tableau yeah. and they would, I was trying to figure out whether they're a competitor, they would integrate, I think they would integrate your would, data. Yeah, they would more integrate our data. Okay. We could be a, a source for, the, for, for uh, uh, data or insight analytics for them. Well, that's a software company with yeah. a much higher multiple than when yeah. I first met you, which was much more of a hardware company. Yeah, yeah. 
No, we, we, yeah, we, uh, we aspire to get those kind of valuations also. <laughs> well, you deserve it. I mean, I think that this is a very changed story. Now, there's still terrific hardware. I saw on your website a wristband that yeah. you can use. I mean, and yeah. then there's one on your chest. I mean, what do you, yeah. where, how many parts of your body can have scanners? Yeah, no, it, you know, tracking, every, you know, today, more and more things are being tracked, and there's right. more. You can get more and more efficiencies out of this. So, you know, we tracking you know employees, patients, uh, assets, you know, all of these things. So, you know, we said we provide a, a performance edge to the, the front line of business by having you know every employee, you know, uh, device, uh, uh, you know, technical thing, being connected and optimally uh, utilized, visible right. to the networks. Uh, last thing is, why is it only footballs? Because they have they have, they have bulky. Uh, equipment and you can put some. I mean, why can't it put a sensor on a basketball player to see whether the, that's that guy's working too hard? Maybe that guy's going to be out of breath. Maybe that guy's going to hurt himself yeah. because they, there's billions of dollars at stake with basketball players yeah. who are getting hurt all the time. Yeah, I think we just, football it, it, it works uh, particularly well. What you know, yeah. our type of technology works particularly well for football, but it all, would work for also basketball, ice hockey, you know, uh, soccer. They just haven't. Ice hockey just hasn't discovered it yet. I think the ice hockey the challenge has been the puck. How do you track the puck uh, right. and put the tag in inside the puck has been, you know, we can do it, but it's more costly. Um, wow. On basketball, they've been more focused on the ball than the players. Yes, they should focus on the players because yeah. we've seen too many injuries yeah. from people who we should have flagged it ahead yeah. of time. Absolutely. I think that we would do a better job, though. I bet you do. That's Anders Gustafsson, Zebra Technology CEO, CBR. The key thing here, hardware to software. A much better, higher price earnings uh, ratio, and that's what you want from a company. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.